I'm just trying to get my shit right. Is it? Yeah. Is You're this good. where? No, you. Well, you're doing like this. I to know because I feel like I'm about to hit it. No, just get comfortable, then adjust. So pull it a okay, little. Okay, get comfortable. There you go. Now where? Well, just relax for a second. No, no, you look stiff. No, relax. I am stiff. There, right there. You're good. Okay. And I can tell you if you need to move it or whatever. Okay. Do we? All right. So dialing it back here a little bit. Let's put our judges hat on for a moment, okay. and let's answer some questions that people really want to hear and that's what are the top three or five things we typically tell people after a show when they come back or come to see us for feedback go you need more stage time oh i like it explain yeah and when you say that what does it mean yeah sometimes people can be on stage one two times and they're like how can i improve and for me it's the whole presentation of coming out um, and showcasing your work and your body to its fullest. Mm-hmm. And that means like you're not hanging out off stage. I always tell people, if you can see the judging table and you're standing off to the side, we can see you. Mm-hmm. So if you're standing there and your gut's hanging out or you're just like looking like, oh my God, this is taking so long. When is this, when is it my turn? You know, we see those things. And then we also see the person who's had a lot of stage time. They're ready to go. They are game faces on, their posture's up. Um, And then the minute their toe taps the stage, it's just, they don't look at their feet. Mm -hmm. They don't have this look of like, I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm doing. Like a switch goes it, There's a switch. Yeah, they're engaged with the judging panel immediately. And their walk is confident. They're, they know exactly what they're doing and when they're going to do it. And even if something kind of like trips them up just a little bit, they know exactly what they're going to do. Um, we've even talked about things like... Um, posing hard and posing soft, Mm -hmm. like with Amanda. That is experience. That is having stage time. That is, you know, if you're alone at a show, which happens a lot for athletes, your coach can't be at every single show, you have to pay attention and know what's going on. Oh, I got moved out to the side. I was posing extremely hard. Maybe I should soften up just a little bit. And then you get moved back towards the center and you're like, okay, that maybe I should pose just an... uh, little harder and now I'm back in the center so it's paying attention it's not just going out there and doing your thing Mm -hmm. because you got to remember this even though it's your show you have to be able to maneuver and pivot based on what is happening around you and so yeah and that only comes with experience and a good posing coach yeah, and a good posing it, coach and good coaching. I think coaching. it comes with preparation yeah. and with lots of experience. You've right. had a lot of time to prepare. Exactly. I always but, try and... But, I mean, I, I genuinely think that you can have less show experience, but still a lot of, not stage, but... Um, I guess I would call it scrimmage. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? absolutely. So when so I work with you, girls, if you approach it like I that, put mm-hmm. that tool in their toolbox. Right. Mm-hmm. I tell them I give them a toolbox, and we put little things that you may never use. You call, but, have you said but it's it before, in there. Like tools in the tool belt. Right. It's it's like um, you may never have to use this, mm-hmm. but it's in there just in case that one time it happens. You're like, oh, yeah, we talked about this Mm -hmm. three years ago. I know what to do. It goes back to what we talked about last time. You were talking about taking the boxes off. Yeah. But one of the main things is being prepared to pose really, really well. Right. All goes back to what you were just saying. Right. And, And experience doesn't mean you flip your hair more or you shake your butt more or you bounce a lot, right. or you 
do the mm, kissy lips mm-hmm. it's or not the winking flare. or the shoulder <clears throat> shrug. Yeah. It's not less is actually more. And the more you're on stage. Okay, say that one more time. Less is more. Yes. Less is more. Yeah. And when you're new, when you're seeking videos, mm-hmm. right, of people you emulate and or you want to emulate and who motivate you, um, you see the pros or you see people who are about to go pro. Mm-hmm. They have a lot of stage time. Mm-hmm. The difference between an amateur and a pro among many other things, but when you're looking at their posing, they get a whole minute or more to do this mm-hmm. whole thing. And so they sometimes, even sometimes go over that. Right. I have, when I meet with someone new, I have them send me a short video clip of them posing. Mm-hmm. And I'll get like these minute and a half <coughs> routines, and I'm like, okay, so <laughs> let me revisit your amateur or pro mm-hmm. oh i'm an amateur okay well the, this is great practice stuff for you but we have to take a lot of this out you get 10 seconds max mm-hmm. you know like, what oh. you were talking about too about this is i mean this is where it really gets good here because you're yeah. talking about the stage time right good stage time and, and the experience on there and then you were talking about not as maybe not go out there all the time the point is well prepared stage time not just going up there doing a thing because that doesn't count again that circles back to we've talked about this many times it doesn't matter what it is posing nutrition Uh training know your why yeah Mm -hmm. i want to make sure all my people know why they're doing what they're doing or why i want them to turn their foot this way or why i want them to uh pull their shoulders forward or pull their shoulder back or pull Whatever I'm asking you to do, there's a reason for Mm -hmm. it. So-and-so might not do it, but for your particular body, I need you to do it. Mm -hmm. Remember back with Vanessa. Think back. Wellness. I'm sorry. My eye is stinging. I I don't know if it's doing it, but I feel like it's dragging down. (laughs) Doesn't look like it. Okay. So think back, Vanessa. Wellness, right? And you... Preparing her, she did really, really well. Her presentation, and everything, and you had her like think of her favorite care, uh, favorite uh, competitor, mm-hmm. and get and get in that mindset. Mm-hmm. Remember that? Yeah. So it, I'm not sure if it was Vanessa that we did that with, but it was somebody that was having a hard time feeling natural on the stage. They right. could do the things, but like the face. Mm-hmm. was not matching anything right. or the confidence uh-huh. that she had. I she would was, say Trina's one of those people it well. Initially. So I was yeah. like, okay, it's not that I want you to go and like pretend to be someone else. But what I want you to do is go and watch whoever is your like idol mm-hmm. in this sport and sit somewhere in your house, like lock the door so nobody can come in and interrupt you so you don't care if someone thinks you look silly or whatever, but sit and have a mirror set up and watch this person's face and moves and you be her and Mm -hmm. get like you, you've got the head tilts and the looks down, get your face to do what her face does in those moments so that you can feel what that looks like. Right. And then you'll see it's just naturally coming because of the thing I'm thinking and doing. And and then all of a sudden she was like, bam. She was like, oh, okay, I get it. Yes. She didn't go and make that girl's faces, but her own faces that she made when she right. wasn't in posing practice right. actually showed up. Right. That's yeah. a good point because uh, I was going to wait and see if you would mention it. And you did about she wasn't trying to mimic the person. No. You should never mimic Exactly. Someone. But you took that person as kind of like a guideline, a roadmap. Kind of do what they do, but eventually let it, your own natural personality, mm-hmm. your own natural body, the way you pose for your body, not theirs, comes right. out. It's just like, here's your starting point. It's like driving practice. Yeah. When you drive with the instructor in the car. Yeah. You're just 
feeling how it feels. Yep. He can stop that shit right now mm-hmm. if you're doing something stupid. Right. He can turn the wheel if he's got to when they have those little... Mm-hmm. It's like learning math. Ones. There yeah. is many ways to get to the answer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, Not yeah. just one way. So you take certain parts mm-hmm. that make sense to you and do that. I heard something uh, the other day when I'm driving, I listen to podcasts or books. I just can't listen to nonsense anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, There's a lot of it out there. Yeah. <laughs> and he was talking about what motivates you and learning to know the difference between, and this spoke to me like it hit me hard, motivation mm-hmm. and inspiration. Okay. Motivation is all external. It's like, looking at people or reading things or hearing slogans like you got this, you Mm -hmm. can do, you know, no pain, no, those types Mm -hmm. of things are, are motivating, but to have success, you have to be able to go inside and inspire yourself. It's okay to have external motivation, but there's gotta be something that lights that fire in you that inspires you to be good and continue and continue the habit or the practice so you have success. Well, motivation is fleeting. It's, it's temporary. Yes. It's just something that got give you a boost. And again, circling back why? to what's your why. Yep. And the inspiration comes from inside. Yes. Yeah. I mean, they work together well as right. a pair, but, you know, not like all or nothing. But Yeah, no, so like when that. you're talking about finding that person that you idolize who motivates you. Mm -hmm. You have to take little pieces of different things and kind of mesh it with your own to inspire that own, your own stage persona to Mm -hmm. come out. Right. So I'll tell the girls, especially you need to become something that you're not to be on stage. You can't put your everyday self on stage and be successful. You have to become a little bit more. more. A performer. And and yes, it's mm-hmm. like acting. It, mm-hmm. You are on stage. Right. Just like an actor or a singer, you are a performer. Mm-hmm. Well, okay. I mean, this is, didn't, e- weren't even around you a lot at the time, but this just shows kind of like how our minds think, right? Right. Vanessa was one of, what I'm about to describe, and we used it quite a bit when we were having those posing classes, you know, back a few years ago. And this also goes back to what you were saying about if the judges can see you, you know, or you can see them, they can see you. Yes. I used to tell people, as soon as you step up that ladder and get close, you are now in character. Yes. Mm-hmm. Like a 100. character on a movie set, whether you can see anything or not, you are on character. Mm-hmm. You get into that mindset. Everything about what you've been doing comes out then. Mm -hmm. Whoever your person is or whatever, you're in character. And you are not out of character until you walk off the stage on the other end and you know you are out of sight. Yes. Because that's that's when they, you know, you get in character is okay, you know, rolling number one, take Mm -hmm. number two. Right. But here you get one take. Yes. On the stage. Yeah, you get one take. You don't get to come back and do a take two. You got to nail that take right off the bat. And we used to preach all that about mm-hmm. getting character all the time. Mm-hmm. And at the judging table, you know how fast it goes down there. Oh, gosh, yeah. You know, you're. It's like a the blink class of an eye ha- sometimes. The, the class you have just judged, mm-hmm. and they're doing confirmations, and, you know, I know we all are like, okay, we're confirmed. My stuff's already Sometimes down I'm at like the table. Still writing, like, hang on a second, because I want to, yeah. Right. But if my paper's passed down, I'm already looking, looking to because yep. my head judge is saying, I, I'm going to need your next group. Yep. Mm-hmm. Top, top five. And so Get them I'm, ready. I'm already looking. Mm-hmm. Yes, Good point. Yes, yes, no, no, no. Yeah. So I'm and looking what are those before girls, you're even coming out. What are those competitors doing? Right. When you're when you're doing that. Right. They're they, just they're just standing waiting. They're just waiting, waiting in the wings on the side. But if yeah. one is already in character oh, or, yeah. or 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 I know, know well she's, coached, 
Yeah, I know quick? she's ready to go. I need to take a look at her. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, I need to take a look at her. Maybe she's already going to yes. be one that so, we're saying. So yeah, oh, that would oh, so experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would. Right. And this is around. different too from the ones that are you know, lined up on the side, lined up there, moving around to get your attention. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't like that. I, I don't I, either. I don't care. I get it if you are moving because. You have a cramp. Right? Yeah, that's different. Or to avoid or, a cramp. Maybe. Or how, how many times have you been on stage and your lip is doing this? Uh-huh. All the time. Or your eye is doing this. And it to you, it feels like it's magnified times mm-hmm. one million. Like <clears throat> me saying, I feel like my eyebrow, <laughs> my eyelid <laughs> and, has drugged down. And you know, you're trying so hard to not do it, but you're thinking... I'm going to get marked mm-hmm. down for this. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get points taken See, off. On, on that. <laughs> three points. My eye oh, was yeah, twitching. <laughs> in that instance, you're moving for a purpose. Right. Reset. Right. right. But if adjust. you're just. Yes. If you're but you doing know, a lot it. of coaches will say, be sure to move to get their attentions. Or maybe not a coach. They just think that or somebody says, go out there and do that to draw you know, the attention to you. Well, number one, if you're trying to work for my attention, you didn't get it because of your physique. Right. Or your presentation mm-hmm. or your pose, you know, all that. Kind. You didn't whole, get, well, yeah. you didn't get my attention for the right reason if you're over there having to move around to get my attention. <laughs> yeah. Or if we've already seen everyone front and back, front and back, front and back, and you're still having it, to try and get my attention. I think Tyler you Mannion talked on it. this today about movement oh, did he? Staying, oh, did he? but it was in <clears throat> classic physique mm-hmm. he was um breaking down the arnold but anyway you need to hold your poses mm-hmm. um i was sitting out at a show at the emerald cup this is way way long ago and it was just bodybuilding and figure and i remember they had flown out Rock, I can't remember his last name, but anyway, he posed, he judged a lot of national shows. But anyway, he was at this show and he was head judging. And oh no, they had just started bikini, bringing bikini into the NPC. And all the girls came out and they wouldn't stop moving. And he got on his mic and he said, I need you girls to stop. Just hold your pose and stay. Well, none of the girls really knew what that meant. Mm-hmm. So they just kept doing it. Because this is my pose. It's a butterfly pose, but yeah. it's a pose. And he said it. If you, I mean, if your head judge is telling you not to do something, I've heard, I've heard some people mm-hmm. like get upset on the mic. Mm-hmm. Only be told once. Preferably never, but... If your group is being told to do something, do it. Mm -hmm. Freaking do it. If they say stop moving and just hold, that's what you do. And you do it the best you can. But he he got upset, made him file off, and Mm -hmm. then come back on, and then told the runner to go back and tell all the other girls, don't do it. Mm -hmm. Listen to the head judge. The head judge for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. So yours was stage time, stage, you know, mm-hmm. experience. stage experience, yeah. not necessarily stage time, right. yes. stage experience. Yes. So what about you? What we had Karen's about stage experience, stage time. So another top five thing that we tell uh, competitors when they come off the stage with regard to critiques. Uh, one of the most frequent critiques I have to give in bikini is you needed to be leaner. That's like usually at the top of the list. Yeah, I mean, probably most people. It's gonna think about it. It's gonna be mean. This is unfiltered, but I Like mean. I'm getting anxiety <laughs> about saying it. I mean, some of them oftentimes look like they are about to start prep. Mm -hmm. And and that's not that they don't look good. They look great. They have a great shape. But this is bodybuilding purposes, competition purposes. Right. We can't see the muscle that they built. 
we know it's under there, but you just can't see it yet, and they're just not anywhere near lean enough to be in that center spot where they might deserve to be based on their muscle mass. So, yeah, do you come, think it's come a, in lean enough? Do you think it's uh, starting prep too late before a show or unrealistic expectations? Be, and, and I'll kind of I'll kind of start that conversation. I, a I bit. think actually that it's a lot of. Um, a set number of time, a set number of weeks, mm -hmm. is what prep is, mm -hmm. and a set show, based on that set number of weeks. So, it's not even always that the person's metabolism wasn't high enough to support a prep, so they couldn't get lean enough. It's not always that they um, weren't willing to allow enough time. It's a lot of times just like. It's almost like throwing a dart at the dartboard and being like, that's where we're going. There's not enough thought put into it of how much they needed to lose for the look that they wanted and working backwards to determine how much prep time they need. It's, I know I've got a great base under here and I wanna do this show and prep is 12 weeks or prep is 16 weeks, so then they start on that date, and there was just not enough time to get lean enough. Well, time, yeah, but also, how often does a prep go perfectly? But that's when perfectly? prep ends, because 12 well, yeah, weeks. Yeah. But, but how often, this is based, okay, we're going 12, 16 weeks, this is the plan. How often does prep, uh, how often does prep go perfectly to plan? Well, it almost never happens, but... My point is that there's people that have done that 12 or 16 week prep and didn't really take into account how much they needed to mm -hmm. lose or the time. But then when they finish, if their feedback is you needed to get leaner, sometimes the takeaway they have from that is my body won't get lean enough mm -hmm. for a show because I already did. And why the fuck are you doing a show? <laughs> right. <laughs> but but yeah. they, they walk, yeah. well, they learned through that prep. Bullshit. That I call body, bullshit. I, no, I, it is straight up bullshit, mm -hmm. but it is a firm the reason, belief that the they reason. have yeah. just because of a lack of understanding mm -hmm. that they totally could have prepped longer than that. They could have changed their rate of loss if they needed different but they just get sucked into, I see bodybuilders on stage and I looked up online and it says you prep for 12 weeks <laughs> or you prep for 16 weeks. So if you aren't one of the people in the top five that didn't need to change anything, well then you just are not capable of getting there because you went through the process they went through and it didn't work for you. Well, no, the, the like top my level body pros. doesn't work like that mm -hmm. uh, as far as calories in, calories yeah. out. It's really like whether I eat red food or green food. But you know what I mean? Like yeah. the people that have this thing where they'll look at you like straight up serious as a heart attack. My body doesn't work like that. Well, like the, you could say, like if you have a huge sodium increase, you're gonna retain water. Oh well, no. So my last coach determined that my body doesn't work like that. Well, okay. So a lot of these people are making these, doing certain number or certain weeks of prep based on people who are already at the high level. They right. know what they can do. They right. know what they, they know can how handle. to dial that. Shit exactly, and and, their and, and, body works like that. Well, and, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but here's the thing: that's just elite genetics. Most of the people. This goes back to the people you competed against and stuff, right? Yeah. You didn't have forty pounds of body fat to lose. God no. Because in the off season, you didn't have to work to just massively build your base because your base physique is already there. That's yes. why you're a pro. That's why you're at the Olympia. For most of the people at that level, prep it, or off season is more about, I would say, fine tuning, bringing up weaknesses, bringing down things that are over versus the rest of us out there, 
we're still building that physique. And sometimes it takes a little bit more initial weight gain in the off season than it does when you're already there. So yeah, 16 week prep for somebody up there, probably right on the number. Right. Us mere mortals who haven't achieved that level, who are still building up there, we got a lot more work to do, and we haven't had the experience, like stage experience, Mm -hmm. we haven't had the experience of a lot of preps to still know what our body can and cannot do. And I think people need to realize, too, that as you go through this process of getting experience and stage time and getting leaner and taking your critiques, you cannot do the same thing that you did the previous prep for the next prep. I mean, unless you're doing a back-to-back show, but then you're just tweaking little tiny things usually. Right. Like you're talking about doing the same thing and expecting a Like if I did a show this year Mm -hmm. and then I waited and did another show next year around the same time, I'm not. And let's say I had a great result Mm -hmm. this year. Mm Mm-hmm. I am not going to do the same thing I did this year, next year. Mm -hmm. Because if nothing changes, nothing Nothing changes. changes. Right. And the whole division, the whole industry is all about change. Mm -hmm. We see it all the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, even at just judges, we're like, oh God. (laughs) Okay. Okay. <laughs> we got to learn how to evaluate I know. again. Different, different way, different I set know. of eyes. I, I would like to inevitable. say that um, something that really, why I like uh, working with you all is, you know, having sat at the judging table together and is that we feel the same way. And I would really, really love for female competitors, especially to understand that when they come to a judging table, and they're asking for a critique. That one, that takes guts. Mm -hmm. One, it took guts to get up on stage. Two, it takes guts to come to the table and ask, what can I do better? Mm -hmm. I want them to understand that yes, you need some thick skin to hear a critique. Mm -hmm. And you know, we all want the real stuff. Tell me, I don't care how bad it is, Tell me. I want everyone to understand when they come to me, the information I'm about to give you does not place any value on you as a human being. Mm -hmm. This information is for you to take back to your coach or to make a few changes so that when I see you next year, I want to see you better. If you're a great person and you're a good human, what we have to say at the table has nothing to do with you as a human. So Mm -hmm. don't let it lower your Mm self-esteem. Don't let it enter that space where you start to question yourself Mm -hmm. and that you have to, well, I'm going to show them next time. You know, Mm -hmm. it's like, take that information, sit with it, and then make a plan. It's a professional mindset. It is. And it's a, prof- it's, I love when people come and they say, please tell me it won't hurt my feelings. Mm-hmm. Here's some things that I want to work on. Am I moving in the right direction? Well, if you don't have that mindset, why go to the judging table anyway? Yes. Are you looking for validation? Or attention. That you were actually better than okay. you thought you were and you want just one judge to say oh no i actually had you at like number two or three <laughs> not number seven or eight mm-hmm. yeah i mean I, i'm not saying they do that but you got to wonder sometimes yes. when they come up and you give them advice they just like like you big meanie you yes know? well sometimes i think they're wanting an explanation like if they thought they should have been first and they were second right for instance I'm wanting an act, like explain yourself. Mm-hmm. How could you have seen this <laughs> and went with this? I know, right? Uh, or this? Yes. Uh, yeah. Let's that's... let's hear your excuse. You know, <laughs> which actually is all of the things that dude had done 
that you haven't done yet. Mm. And I can explain them all to you. And you can take those. You can go home and be like, I'm doing this one, this one, this one, and this one, and this one. There's no more left. That means at worst, I am on par with that dude. Yeah. <laughs> at best, I could fucking take his ass. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think um, to have longevity in the sport, your mindset from the very beginning is how am I going to leave a legacy here? Right. True. Um, and what is my contribution to this sport? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's, it's not all about the trophies or, you know, who you are or the pictures that you post or anything. It is like what we're all trying to do, take our experience and our knowledge and impart it to those. And then that knowledge gets passed down through generations, mm -hmm. right? Um, just like what, what we do with our kids. And um, that's why I love this sport and I think why, you know, you gravitate towards certain people. You um, do. But that's really important. So when you're coming to a table, you're sitting at a table that is legacy heavy mm -hmm. on many different planes, mm -hmm. maybe not as a competitor, but as a coach mm -hmm. or somewhere a promoter someone, they have impacted somewhere. this sport yeah. right. on a level that you may know nothing about mm -hmm. and um i mean you should always look at a table as a re very revered space mm -hmm. you know not just to brown nose but to like man i don't know who that person is what what it What's the history behind that, mm -hmm. you know? Sometimes I look at a judging table now, like when we go to shows together or big shows, I'm like, oh my gosh. That's so and so. That How is cool. Yeah, and it's good to uh -huh. see that person in their give back, mm -hmm. you know, from a competitor standpoint or a coach standpoint. Um, you really see their passion mm -hmm. for why they do what mm -hmm. they do. Mm -hmm. um, so when you come to the table, you know, and somebody's giving you a critique, just remember that that table, whether you're coming to a local show, a, a qualifier or a pro show, that table has a lot to offer. Mm -hmm. Well, people, I want to acknowledge, too, that judges don't make money. You know, <laughs> if, if expenses are paid, I mean, a lot of times they'll give you like travel or whatever and stuff. But if that covers it and you break even, you're lucky. Most of us are there because, like you said, to give back passion for the sport. Yes. Want to see people improve. That's really the only benefit. Right. And so if, if a judging table, particularly if you asked multiple judges for feedback and it was that you needed to work on several things, it is in no way designed to make you feel bad about uh -uh. yourself no. or to put you down or to gatekeep you out of an elite community or something. It is to help you build what it is that all of those people want the sport to be. It's, it's to help you achieve the standard that, the sport knows and loves Absolutely. and wants to yes maintain but not keep people out of rise people up to right it's every time i'm talking to somebody and and this has happened a lot where somebody will come to the table you know and they're like i qualified for nationals i'm gonna go i'm going tomorrow and <laughs> mm, I know you know i yeah and i'll say well, there's some things I'd like to talk to you about with regards to that. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't want to be your dream killer, mm -hmm. but I'm trying to um, impart a little experience to you as far as going to a pro qualifier. Because getting a pro card, the sheer quantity of quality that goes to those qualifiers is 
It's insane. Uh, it's mind blowing. Yeah. It's mind blowing. I mean, I got my <gasps> pro card in 2011, and I think there was like 1,300 competitors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. and it's a two day show, and you're like, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. But I've also, I had also competed and trying to get that pro card since 1989 you know, working towards it, not like right. thinking in mm -hmm. 1989, mm -hmm. I'm getting right. a pro card and I'm going to be famous, but <laughs> not that I'm even famous now. I don't even know why I said that. <laughs> 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 I think that's because I hear it all the time. Oh, yeah. That's um, a, that's, but, <laughs> that's a, the next, next podcast, I think we'll probably talk about that specifically. I mean, <laughs> right. Get real. Okay. Anyway. But anyway, uh, now I just lost my train of thought because I was <laughs> thinking of my dad. Um, well, you, you, you got your pro card. Right. Like, and, yeah. you know, when somebody comes to that table and they're saying, I'm going to go, I will have to, sometimes I'll bring another judge in and help buffer what I'm trying to say so they can back me up and think it's not just me Smart. trying to hold you back mm -hmm. because I'm trying to, one, save you a lot of money mm -hmm. because shows are expensive. Mm -hmm. And for females, let me just say... It, Get a second mortgage. Yeah. <laughs> um, and flights keep getting higher. Oh, my gosh, higher. right, in these days. And so... Time off of work, all I, that stuff. I want to say to some of these people, you know, you qualified and there's three people in your class mm -hmm. and I not to diminish your win or your qualification but when I know what I know and these guys know what they know mm -hmm. and we're trying to let you know that you're you probably should take a little time and here's why you know you need more stage time you need to develop this area or you need to be a little leaner or you know there's there's just a lot of different things to get to that and you know I'll have some people say to me well how can I get experience if I don't go well there's other shows that you can go mm -hmm. do and see where you fall in the pond mm -hmm. rather than the ocean right because the ocean will swallow you up mm -hmm. well here's the thing about that somebody just again won their class maybe even an overall at a show where each class had four five six people in it okay whatever okay so you got your national qualification good every person you will compete against at nationals got their national qualification absolutely and at least three quarters wow. of them got it last year or the year before that, mm -hmm. or the year before that. So they have had time to make more improvements since they got their national qualification. Yes. What gets you your national qualification at national shows most likely is not going to get you a pro card at pro qualifiers. No. Maybe not even get you in the top five because there has to be significant improvements you have to assume there there needs to be significant improvements over a national qualified physique yes a lot of times yes yeah sometimes people bring yeah. it to That's the stage saying. on That's, a regional but the level thing is, but well stephanie you know is a good example yeah. of that but you need to assume right that what got you your not national qualification will not necessarily LIE to do well at nationals. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Because, or at least I mean, don't assume not, that it yeah, will. Like you said, because it is so expensive. If you go past that assumption, the risk you're taking is all that money. Right. And all, all that, that extra time, time off mm -hmm. from building, making, mm -hmm. yeah, improvements. Building, making those improvements that are needed. So when you're up against this decision about I got my national qualification. I mm -hmm. want to go to a national show. Like the old Indiana Jones movie, choose, mm -hmm. but choose wisely. Absolutely. You know, a lot of times I hear the, uh, the reason people give for do, making that choice. I just got nationally qualified. 
and I was second out of three or something mm-hmm. like that. Uh, but I got nationally qualified, so I'm going to go and do a national show. And people will say it's to see where I fall yes. at a national show. Well, the odds are you're going to be one of any number of 16th places, I was which just say doesn't that. tell you much. So you you're good? only, I guess determiner of that is you're going to see which past probably the second call outs you got like i don't know was i in third or fourth call outs did they have a fifth because that was a big show well let's you do know? the math here if you have five there's yeah. three call outs to make top 15 yeah right that's yeah. if they do five yeah um so you're looking at are you in the fourth fifth or sixth call out i mean i've been to national shows where there's like mm-hmm. six or seven call outs and you're like, where did you fall in? Mm-hmm. in and, and if they're wanting to see themselves up against high level national athletes and you're one of those in the fifth call outs of mm-hmm. it in a five call out thing, you're not standing beside her Mm-mm. because you didn't come in a condition that the judges wanted to see you stand beside her. So if that was what your goal was, take your show pictures from when you got your national qualification and put them beside her show pictures and save yourself a good cool thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> well, the thing is, there there is an argument in certain circumstances to go in to see how I compare in certain circumstances doesn't mean I subscribe to it. I'm just saying there is an argument. Oh, right. And the in argument is that yes. person's already right there. there maybe they yeah. won their, the overall at a big national qualifier. And if they have the mindset that I want to go see how I compare against those girls. Okay. Maybe. I, I, you know, if you're willing to put the money up, knowing that you're probably not going to get that pro card. I mean, you still might. But if you take all that into account and you're willing to risk that and you keep the expectations realistic this is experience this is to go and see i can get behind that in some cases but when you got your national qualification because you were second in a small show the only way you're going to be get that comparison if you happen to be standing by somebody in the preliminary rounds who actually ends up in the top five right but there's a caveat to that. You're still comparing apples to oranges because you're comparing the person who is lean enough and balanced enough to get into it to somebody who still has five, six, seven, ten pounds to lose. You have no idea what you're going to look like mm-hmm. yeah. when it comes off. So how can you compare? Yes. You're not comparing your best to somebody else's best. Right, right. So you go there and what you went there to gain, you did not. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right, exactly. Like, what are you actually going to learn out of it? Not what do you want to learn out of it. What do you even have the feasibility of learning right. I would out of this experience? Even tell somebody who has qualified, you know, to don't go to compete, go to watch. Mm. Go to watch. Yes. And sit up close. Sit yep. up close. close. The whole time. Yep. Don't go out Don't. and browse the booths no. while you, the no. class you want to see No, sit down is and watch who is there yeah. and be like, you'll learn so much. Right. You'll learn so much. And don't just leave <clears throat> after like the first call outs have been declared mm-hmm. and then forget about all those in the fifth call outs so that you can actually see what some of those girls look like that are Absolutely. fifth call out. They look great. They all, <laughs> they're yeah, going to make you be I'm like, saying. holy crap. That's what oh, I would have seen her in any gym and been like, she is the next, next Miss Bikini Olympia. Right. You know, I mean, <laughs> and she's in the fifth call out. Yeah. It's really, but why is she in the, okay. So why is she in the fifth call out? Okay. Mm-hmm. It might have been her presentation. She might have 
held a little water. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But no, um, no, her I'm, tan I'm, could be I'm going a little bit different. But yeah, come back. Yeah. Going a little bit. Why is she in the fifth call up? Because she got her national qualification too. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yep. You're not getting a it, national qualification does yes. not mean you are ready for nationals. No. And to add to when I said go watch it, mm-hmm. if you do your research and a deeper dive, you will find there is a seminar somewhere on posing. Mm-hmm. Pre- and usually at some of these bigger shows, you'll see Sandy mm-hmm. heading right. these, and they're free. Mm-hmm. They are free. You can go to our women's head judge representative, Sandy Williams, mm-hmm. and talk to her and get a critique. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's wild. I mean, we're thinking about going to one to watch her and see what she says. Ex- I mean, it's, actually, just, we are going to go. Yes. And we're coaches, judges, but we're still going to the learn. expert. Learn and from learn. the expert. Yes. Mm-hmm. So yes. you're right on. If you have the opportunity to go do that. Oh, yeah. And if you were, you know, I've had people say, well, I already bought my ticket. I already mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, well, just think how much you can save in not tan not mm-hmm. hair not mm-hmm. makeup mm-hmm. not all the specialty food and like go and enjoy the show yeah get some knowledge and you will actually that, walk oh away with God. having learned something like that you maybe can we take should take our on. people like a retreat style mm-hmm. and just take a team and I just like go that. and watch and participate Agreed. and you know give them some homework yes i like that i do I, too i fucking like boom that. yeah Let's look now i want to see yes. the boom thing yes <laughs> the boom thing was pretty cool wasn't it? i know i was like whoa it caught me <laughs> yeah. off guard but yeah that would be kind of we need to look into that like I kind of like a field trip. That, mm-hmm. I, that's exactly what I was about to say. And when you want to get little kids interested in history or art or archaeology right. or whatever, you plan a trip to the field. Tri- I mean, you plan a trip to the a field trip to the museum, and let them see. It, yeah, and get all immersed in it, and then they have a passion for it. Yeah, I want to go and dig things up when I'm right. an adult. But then they can you know? see like and, and <laughs> these competitors need to see it, not just watch some clips, right? Not just watch a show because it is so much different. Like when the, you're watching it at mm-hmm. home and when you're there. I mean, even just the you excitement see level, the amazing, which you need part to feel all that. You need to know what it's like mm-hmm. to get that stage experience yes. it, because if your first time going there is that like you feel it in your in- chest <laughs> you know you feel it because the music's oh. pumped up and everything yeah. and the yeah. energy it's like when it, like when I was in high school our high school team football team got to go and play in uh what was the Dallas Cowboy Stadium before it Texas was stadium yeah in Texas Stadium like the big NFL mm-hmm. and it was like walking into the damn Super Bowl. That right? it, it just was so much bigger and right? louder. Yeah. And like you could feel it and hear it inside your body, the vibrations <clears throat> yeah. and everything. And it was just a football game. We do them every Friday, <laughs> right? But it was different. Just that, yeah. So when you like practice your posing at home, that's just a football game, baby. Mm. Yep. You ain't wait, been wait, to wait, the wait. Super Bowl yet. Wait, wait, yeah. wait. Texas? Hmm. Friday Night Football is sacred. <laughs> I know, but I'm just saying, like, I mean, but it's the same thing, but it's different. No, I know. It, and, like, know. so I've been to a show, and I've been nationally qualified. That was just a Friday Night Football game. Yeah. That, I mean, you know, your whole yeah. class was there. This is going to be the Super Bowl. It's right. freaking sold out. No, it was right. sold out the first night. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But you're you going to feel it all different. But you know, any of our family members hear this and we said it's just a football game on Friday night, we're going to be cursed. <laughs> I know, like everyone from my graduating class yeah. disowned me. Uh huh. Yeah. It's a big deal down there. But you're absolutely right, though. Yeah. But anyway, uh, to finish off about the, uh, you know, being lean enough or conditioned enough, you know, most of the time when you're looking at pictures, you're looking at yourself and you think you're lean enough. Lose a couple more. 
I mean, because especially for like beginners or inexperienced coaches, you know, it's it's not a really good reflection in the stage, the pictures, the camera, the lights and everything. Mm-hmm. You're bigger. And it's the lights are so unforgiving. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Every flaw that you may not have seen before or you only saw close up yes. can be highlighted. I mean, if you look at it, think about this a lot. We can be in the gym and just flex a little bit and striations all over the place. Bam, lines. <laughs> but they're hard to show up under the lights, even when we're full and yeah. everything. Yep. Because it's diminished a little bit. Yes. That's why you can see bikini girls with striated shoulders in the gym and right. stuff. And on stage, they don't show up. Now, a lot of that is the way they pose mm-hmm. and the way, when done right, you're conditioning and for the stage. And nutrition. All, yeah, all that comes into play. You're peaking and stuff. But in the gym, they'll still have it. Yeah. But even if they tried by then, it's hard to show up. Yeah. Because yeah, the light and does, dem- and the lights, the tans, does diminish that kind of stuff. That's a good point, actually, because I've seen girls in, uh, like, advice groups for competitors that are seeing that, the striation, mm-hmm. show up in the gym. And then they back off their training. Well, they've got tension for one right, thing but on no, the but they, They'll be like, well, yeah. I read in the standards that they don't want to see striations, and I started seeing some striations showing up, so we're not touching my shoulders for the rest of this prep. Well, this is... But that was that day. We mean on stage. Mm-hmm. If you have them and they're not, like, showing up overpoweringly on stage, doesn't matter what you look like in the gym. Mm-hmm. Well, I'll give you a good example that um, hopefully I don't butcher this and it comes out right, but especially the women could m- maybe see this. When you're stage lean, your face it shows emancipated look emaciated good. scratch that <laughs> cut mm-hmm. emaciated um, don't don't no you get that emaciated look that's it right yes you did you just had a little bit of a pause in between <laughs> emaciated that's fine. and look anyway so you have that look but when you're on the stage you don't have that look and you can sit here and say it's the makeup. You can put a ton of makeup on somebody and they have that look on the outside and it still doesn't diminish it, right? The lights, the cameras, pictures, all that stuff hides things that shows up in real life. Mm-hmm. And you got to be person. able to. Yeah, but you got to be able to, to know the difference. And this is where, again, experience comes in. Mm-hmm. Thoughts on that? Well, uh, if when, you disagree, I want to hear it. This is just my thoughts. Well, I just kind of have a like a, a visual for thinking that you're stage lean versus being stage lean on stage um, and maybe needing to lose a little bit before that. When you look at yourself in the regular mirror and you've done your makeup, it looks great. Now go look in the... Uh, 10 times magnifying mirror. Holy shit, I did not know I had all these pores still showing in here. I thought that that one was really, I had a bunch of foundation padded in there, and then I did the powder, and I baked it, and look at the freaking pore now. Nobody can see that. But you kind of have the opposite effect when you look stage lean in the gym, and then you see yourself against someone who you thought was you agreed with stage lean on the stage. If you're standing beside them when you think you're stage lean in the gym, you would no longer think you're stage lean. <laughs> well, there and, would be a stark comparison. And that's where, you know, us telling people maybe you should just go to the show mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and see mm-hmm. what it is we're talking about. Yeah. Because, I mean, just going through the whole system Mm -hmm. of, you know, the late 80s to now and what was available, like there wasn't social media, Mm -hmm. there weren't cell phones. You didn't get YouTube. Yeah, everything was just like snail mail, magazines. That's how, and there were maybe three pro qualifiers, maybe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there was also only two divisions 
bodybuilding and fitness. That was it. Mm-hmm. So um, you don't know really when you're looking at a photo and you're looking in the mirror. You know, sometimes don't you wonder what people see when they look mm-hmm. in the mirror? Right. Um, it's like a chihuahua looking in the mirror and seeing, you know, the big mastiff or mm-hmm. the Great Dane. Um, until you have gone and seen it, do you go, oh, yeah, I need to rethink yeah. some things. Well, um, aside from being able to, like, going to a show and seeing, like, sitting up as close to the judges as you can and seeing what they're seeing, at a big national show, anywhere <laughs> in, like, in the venue, walking through the halls, going to the oh, bathrooms, you know, yeah. the public restrooms, you're going to see people who are either competing tomorrow or they competed yesterday or they competed earlier this morning, but you're going to see them up close. Some of them will have their makeup all done uh-huh. up and you'll be like, oh my God, she looks gorgeous. Wow, she's so much smaller than I thought she oh, was. Oh, 100%. I follow her on Instagram, mm-hmm. and she yeah. doesn't look anything like that Yeah, small. she looks like enormous. But you'll see some yeah. of them that their makeup's all off, and yes, they've got the emaciated look that Chet was talking about. And you won't realize that your skin still has all of that volume in it, and you're looking great. Mm-hmm but you're not as lean as they are the ones that you see walking around carrying yeah. their trophies and going to watch their friends in the audience. And, but it, it's, it's a, a really, look. it's like getting to go to summer camp or something and, and be around people who do this thing you want to do. Yeah. If you go there, you're able to mingle with people and just see. And a lot of even their friends and supporters, mm-hmm are going to all look like bodybuilders, you know? It's just the right. whole community. You're going to see so many people in various stages of fitness, and it will just change your perspective. It will give you some insight that you just don't have if you've only been to a national show or, I mean, excuse me, if you've only been to a regional show or you did one show and you got qualified and now you're going to nationals. Go there and see go what watch. it's like. Like, go walk among the people. You know, it's funny. I can think of one of my first shows. I won my class. And I, the girl that was, when we were checking in, the girl that was in front of me, I'm like, she's the winner. Mm-hmm. She's the overall winner. Like, I could look at her mm-hmm. and know that. I couldn't beat her, but I was totally cool with that because I knew she had some things that I didn't. Mm -hmm. One was experience, Mm -hmm. which meant she had muscle maturity. Mm -hmm. She had stage presence that was undeniable. She was. It's probably what made you look at her in the first place. Retired gymnast. Yeah. Um, I, I just, she was a mom. I, I think I had just had my first child, but looking at her, everything was put together. Mm-hmm. And not that I didn't have everything put together, mm-hmm. but I was sitting back in my self, looking at her, appreciating exactly, uh, yes, it makes you appreciate exactly it. Yeah. where she was at mm-hmm. and going, I'm going to be that one day. I know I need to put my time in. Uh I can't buy what she has. But I want some of that. I want that. Mm -hmm. I am good to put in my time. I am good to work to have that muscle maturity. Because you can't can't buy muscle Mm -hmm. maturity. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can buy bigger, Mm -hmm. but you can't buy grainy. Mm-hmm. You can't buy hardness. Mm-hmm. You can't, there's just stuff you look at and you're like, I, I can't reproduce that next year. Right. I have to work towards that. Mm-hmm. And, I'm willing, to do, to and do. I'm willing to do the work. Mm-hmm. My, one of the top threes, because you both already nailed two of them. Um, my top three 
is building. You just mentioned building, mm-hmm. more muscle. Yeah. That's why I had a pause because it was between you need to build. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's one of the things that thinking back that I've listed down as, as uh, something some, a competitor needs to do is build more muscle, which comes into more time, mm-hmm. obviously. But I mean, and that's bikini, mm-hmm. wellness, right. All figure, of them. classic physique, mm-hmm. bodybuilding, whatever the case may be. You got to take the time to build your base physique. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of it, too, has to do with, you know, maybe they're putting in the work. Maybe they're doing everything right. But are they, their workout program, the training, are they training right? Because kind of going back to, when you get at a top level, Karen, you've been there, you're not really focusing on having to build your base physique because it's, it's there. pretty much there. So you can do things differently to fine tune individual right. muscles a little bit more, focus more on the delts or right. the glutes or the hands or whatever. But for people who are still trying to get to that level, it's you're not there yet because you don't have your base physique built. Right. And you... But you're training like your favorite mm-hmm, pro. Mm-hmm. How does that work? She's putting out some exercises that yeah. she does for her favorite yeah, glute exercises you on YouTube or on Instagram. Right. So yeah. you're not laying your foundation, right? I mean, think of it like this. Your house is going to fall down. Well, no, no. <laughs> it's, it's no different than you're building a house, right? But you're painting the walls before you even have the concrete poured. Mm-hmm. Your foundation's yeah. not there. It's not going to work out the way you think. And I, again, I think that circles back to you are a unique physique. Mm -hmm. You might not have her structure. Mm -hmm. You might not have, you definitely don't have her genetics. We all don't Mm -hmm. have the same genetics. So this sport, I think people need to understand that winning and losing is not based on performance. It is based on a look. Mm -hmm. How you get to that look is different for each individual. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I'll hear people say, oh yeah, today's my um, arms day. And I'm thinking, you should be, why are you focusing on arms when you should be focusing on shoulders? Because if you make your arms smaller, look, appear Mm -hmm. smaller, your shoulders will appear bigger. Mm -hmm. I will never forget Kim Moto sending me my workout program on April 1st. I asked him immediately, is "Is this an April Fool's joke? He goes, what are you talking about? And I said, there's no arms on here. And he goes, Karen, we have just taken you from not competing in bodybuilding to figure you have arms. You're not going to lose your arms. They're involved in chess. They're mm-hmm. involved in back work. Mm-hmm. They're getting work. Wait, wait. Say that again mm-hmm. about why you're not doing the arms. Because? Because I moved out of bodybuilding mm-hmm. into a different division. No, the must. Figure. But why? Because? Because my arms are involved in the push mm-hmm. of chest work and the pull of bicep. Thank you. So, so you're still doing I'm what? I'm still working my arms. <laughs> exactly. They're still getting benefit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I go, okay, as long as I know my why, mm-hmm. then I'm good with that. Mm-hmm. And it totally makes sense to me. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's like that's w- where if he had answered trust the process would have really fucked you up. <laughs> yeah. True. Because you would have been doubting I would have been you like, may have well, even been throwing in process. some arm work because you're like, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to tell me why. I'm so. going to finish up my, right. instead of doing abs, I'm going to do arms uh-huh. or, or whatever and, and throwing everything out of balance. you may have been like balance. stepping yourself backwards by doing that way. Right. right. Or it might be, say, we're trying to figure out if at a regional level show, should our girl be bikini or wellness mm-hmm. or you know where where are we fitting in because mm-hmm. like i look at stephanie sometimes right now and i know she wanted to go wellness but mm-hmm. she got her pro card in bikini but sometimes i look at her in bikini and i'm like eh, figure mm-hmm. you know what i mean mm-hmm. and so 
I might tell my posing girl, okay, here's what I want you to do. You're not, you're going to do your bikini pose in wellness, but I need you to turn your legs so it shows like this. Mm -hmm. And here's why. Mm -hmm. And they're like, got it. Why? But you said, and, and, here, and here's here why. Is something that needs to be in every coach's language, mm -hmm. posing coach, nutrition coach. Uh, performance coach working yeah workout mental coach. everything yeah. everything and, and here's not even why. and here's not even why. just bodybuilding in general mm -hmm. give the instructions and yeah and here's, here's why. why three worded phrase that needs to be in every coach's vocabulary but seems to be non-existent in most right. and on the flip side of that and why <laughs> needs to be in a competitor's Oh, Very God. Lexicon, you know? Yes. Right? It's yes. okay to ask why. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's okay to ask, oh, what is this going to do for me? I like that. Mm -hmm. That sounds interesting. What does it do? Mm -hmm. How does that work? Right? It's even... It's, that doesn't mean you think your coach is stupid. No. It doesn't mean you have lost trust and faith in your coach. It means you want to know why. <laughs> right. And, and like you, when you were five and you asked, but why is the sun yellow? <laughs> mm -hmm. And I want to emphasize when I say those three words need to be in the vocabulary. I don't mean specifically those three words. Right. right? Mm -hmm. It needs to be very much a that concept. The concept yeah. implied. Those three words are just kind of like explaining, you know, painting the bigger mm -hmm. picture. But it would be certainly nice. It's, it's mm -hmm. clarification. Mm -hmm. Right. But as long as the reason for doing something is there, mm -hmm. it, sh you know, it should be put out there. Yeah. It's, you know? I mean, you have to become a lifelong student of learning. Mm -hmm. Because I've told many of our girls, you know, you need to go sit out and watch a couple of the first couple classes to see what are they leaning towards. Mm -hmm. I know. I know where you're going with this. Again, that session. The Instead of, I'm just going to keep practicing the way mm -hmm. we practiced, and then I'm going to go out there, boom, and then it's like I don't know what happened. It's like, did you watch? See what they're doing. What did they're picking. See? Yeah, I. Kim used to tell me that all mm -hmm. the time. Go watch. Mm -hmm. So. I and why not? You're just sitting there, kind of. Mm, no gazing around no. no watch take mental notes yeah take and written see notes. see watch just what's... like you were watching a, a game film from a football game yeah. absolutely you're watching, you're those guys yeah every mm -hmm. time after a game they yeah. go in the next day they watch film That's right how can they improve mm -hmm. what can they do better we can all do better mm -hmm. i mean we should all be striving coaches, for better right right i mean that's actually something that after every show that we go to and uh, like huge props to Chet and I it it just occurred to me that every show that we go to after a client competes I don't care if they won the overall or if they placed fourth you're coming home like the entire car ride home <laughs> is studying the data the photos the video replaying it in your head what could we possibly have done better mm -hmm. where could we have improved this even more because you have that drive to make them better right. to always be learning yes this it could be the greatest experience ever and how can we improve it right well it's i mean thanks for <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what to say to that. Yeah, it's, and it's, that's the thing that most I mean, most competitors most, don't get to I would see. Say most of our clients all don't get to see great that side of them. Coaches do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, that's what it should be done. Because and there's always a conversation. There's yeah. there's, there's there's always something to be learned, mm -hmm. and it's it's a it's a a dual goal: one to help make that competitor better the next time around, and number two to make myself a better coach 100%. because if you're not a better coach tomorrow than you were yesterday something's yeah. wrong mm -hmm. i mean it's a symbiotic relationship mm -hmm. right between you and your athlete mm -hmm. it's like 
I need you to help me be a better teacher mm -hmm. and you need me to help you be mm -hmm. a better competitor. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and it works just, it's wonderful when it works together. Mm -hmm. And it's nice to have conversations with our athletes and say, how could we have done this better? Mm -hmm. Here's what I need from you. What do you need from me? You know, you, you, Amanda is a good example of a student, a student of the game. Yes. Very much Agreed. so. Because, you know, she's getting ready to do her pro debut this year, but the, her last year, which was about two years ago, it was to the point where I didn't have to ask. She was telling me in the morning, I'm soft, I'm flat. Yes. I'm watery, I'm hard, these type of things. And it didn't bother her. Six weeks out, it didn't matter. Yeah. It was just she knew that she, she was in tune with herself, and she was relaying this information. So when I look at the pictures, what do I think? What does she think? Lining it up. Mm -hmm. Because if she's feeling flat and I'm seeing flat, now I look back at the previous 24 hours, why is she flat? And we continue to learn this week to week to week. So when it comes time to peak her, mm -hmm. man, we're on the same page. Yeah, It's like, you know, I still ask the questions, but I'm not going to question her if she says, or I'm not going to question her too much if she goes, no, I feel a little bit softer than normal today. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, okay, we'll see what you look like three hours from now yeah. and see how you feel. But that's a student of the game. Yes. Mm -hmm. That yes. right there. And that, that's hugely beneficial for her or cl competitors like her if they are going to a show that their coach is not able to attend. Yep, that's true too. Uh, if you learn what flat, full, watery, all that stuff feels like and looks like on you and you can recognize it as just data, you can relay that data to your coach to help, I mean, they can yeah. see, they should be able to see those things mm -hmm. in your photos and in videos of you. But it, it, there is, the, I mean, it's technology. There's the possibility that maybe they're seeing what they think is a suspicion of it, but they aren't able to confirm it yet, so they don't want to change anything. But if you know, and they know you know, and they have a suspicion, and you say, It's confirmation. I have it. Yes. That's confirmation. Okay, yes. Let's go ahead and make a change. Well, um, are you so, done? Well, yes, because now I don't know what I was going to say. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Well, put that even to a different perspective, okay? We've all been to shows as athletes and as competitors. The lighting in the bathroom at the hotels the, or the open area, not going to be the same as home. You can bring your light mm -hmm. and it's still not going to be the same. <laughs> So your pictures are not going to be accurate comparisons right. from the week before in many cases. Mm -hmm. So if the athlete can tell you, no, you know, I'm soft or hard or flat, when the pictures don't tell the story, mm -hmm. that's a huge benefit. Even when you go backstage, when they're back there and you're not with them, okay, mm -hmm. this again to your point, you're not with them on this mm -hmm. trip. They can tell you backstage, you know, I, I've been everywhere. I can't find a place to get a good picture, but here's what I got. Okay, yeah, we're not seeing a lot there. What are you feeling? What do you sense right now? What do you see, you know, when you look in the mirror there? And if that person knows what they're talking about, yeah. huge benefit mm -hmm. to them. Yeah, because actually, now I can accurately tell them what they need to do mm -hmm. instead of, shit, the pictures don't tell the story. Nothing mm -hmm. tells the story. We got to play some guessing game and take some mm -hmm. risk here. Yes. Well, uh, funny that we're talking about that because uh, Peter Fitchin had actually put a Facebook post the other day about all the numbers of photos of athletes mm -hmm. and clients that are in flat, full, stringy. He all does these that a lot. He's very good he at had, putting that out there for that people. He had, that he had studied mm -hmm. in order to um, hone in his own skills of being able to see that. But I can't remember if he said it in his post or if that was my comment that, yeah, like I agree with all of that. And I think that athletes should mm -hmm. do the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. Study that, what those things look like. Right. Number one, because you can help your coach like that. But number two, you hear those things as feedback from judges. Yes. Understand and it. sometimes if someone says you're too hard, 
and a competitor or their coach interprets that as too muscular, mm -hmm. then they go and bring down size. Right. When but that wasn't what that judgment. I mean, some people might use right. too hard yeah. as that way. But if you get some feedback from judges that you're not 100% sure what they meant by mm -hmm. it, you know the term, but based on what you know of your physique, your understanding of that term doesn't really match up with that feedback. Right. It's okay, and I encourage it, to ask a clarifying question of, the, like, if you're in front of the judges, ask them, what do you mean by that? So you mean you want me to this? Or that way you give them the opportunity to say, oh, no, actually, what I meant is that you needed a little bit more softness here. Not body fat, you just needed a little... Right. Bit more sodium and water, maybe, you know, exactly. just something to that effect. So you know that it was actually just your peaking. Right. Everything was like spot on. Right. Your next show, just peak, do something different in your mm -hmm. peaking instead of, we're actually going to take this whole season off and detrain because <laughs> they said I'm too muscular for bikini and I want to be in bikini. I don't want to move up. But yeah, just like. Learn what those things mean. Mm -hmm. And then when you do get feedback based on one of those terms, still ask for clarification if you just get a word like right. that and they don't clarify for you so that you know you're on the same page. And, and even if your judge, I mean, if your coach is the one that talked to the judges and they got that feedback, I've seen that not all judges understand what that type of feedback right. means. Mm -hmm. And so I've seen even... Coaches tell their clients, they said you were too muscular for bikini. They meant you were too muscular for bikini when they said you were a little too hard. So mm -hmm. it, it, don't take it as gospel unless you actually know what those things mean. I don't remember if it was when we did our last uh, podcast or it was just in conversation. Mm -hmm. But going back to being lean enough, right? You had mentioned, and this is very, very true, if you're lean enough, I can manipulate your look a lot easier. Yes. Because if you're not lean enough, I can't tighten you up so much. Right. You know, I can't, you know, harden you up so much because the body fat's not going to show, right. right? I can get you fuller, but it may not be a fullness that you want. Yeah. But when you're lean enough, you have more of a range between hard, and soft. Soft, flat, full, tight, all these different looks right. when you're lean enough. Yeah, like... But... Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, no, it's okay. But there's still a limitation there, which goes back to what I mentioned. One of the things I'm writing about, or one of my critiques I see a lot is not building enough. Mm -hmm. Right. Because even when you're lean enough, if the muscle's not there... Mm -hmm. I can't make it pop enough. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, one interesting thing about that, and I don't think an, enough competitors really comprehend how much you can change if you are lean enough, like on show day or whatever. Like, how do you think that people who do really well in crossover, who may be in figure wellness and bikini and win all three classes, Yes, they can pose harder. They can pose differently. They also can, they also can tweak the way that they are peaking to change the way that their body looks harder, softer, mm -hmm. fuller, tighter. All those things can happen in a matter of hours. Yes. You know, I mean, you can, even less than that, depending on what you do. But so just being told you're a little too hard or a little too soft. Doesn't necessarily even mean anything like <laughs> three months worth right. of an issue or like a year worth of an issue. It's at that moment in time, standing next to those particular people mm -hmm. doing these particular movements, you were to whatever. It could be that in two hours from now, I would have said freaking spot on perfect. Like do not yeah. change a thing. And you didn't do any work to your physique. It's just a matter of how you manipulated things 
because you were lean enough. So you right. had the ability to make those last minute, essentially just tweaks, mm-hmm. yes. fine tuning. Mm-hmm. You have something to add to that? No. We well, might be running up on the time. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll add to that real quick because you mentioned the different divisions, right? Well, for when I went for my pro card, I was in three different basically age classes. So I remember Lane saying, okay. Were those 20, 30, and 40? <laughs> 35, 40, 45. <laughs> uh, forget you, man. Okay. Anyway, so Lane asked, okay, which one do we want to make you actually look your best, peak you best? Which class do you think? You know, 35 or the 40 or, or 50? You know, we'll try to do it all, mm-hmm. but if we have to pick one, yeah. At the cost of others, which one, one should that, it be? That's the show. Yeah. That's the game right mm-hmm. there. And why is that? Because he can make that happen because of his ability as a coach. Right. Within like a 30 minute time range and just small adjustments, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. smaller things. It may be pumping harder than you normally would or mm-hmm. not Less pumping at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Those little things, a little bit more water, maybe pick up a little sodium to mm-hmm. tighten, you know, whatever the case may be. You know, he can make that happen. That's a good coach. Mm-hmm. Right. Because, you, you know, it's subtle changes when you're that lean yes. can make a big impact. Mm-hmm. Yes. And you have to keep in mind that those subtle changes exist when you're taking into account what feedback you got. If it's Finger. something that could fall within those parameters, you might not need to change a thing mm-hmm. with the way you physically look. You just need to do something different to yourself right before you present it to us. Right. Well, the point to that is, again, we're giving feedback on seeing somebody at that moment in time. Mm-hmm. Okay, and you made the, the point about just because you get feedback on that doesn't mean you change the whole rest of your six months, depending right. on what it is. You right. know, if it's it, like, no, it, you it got a lot to build. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but if it's something small like that, it doesn't change things because if a coach can change your look, in three different divisions yeah. on the stage, yep. Joe did it with you yeah. uh-huh. between figure and I bikini know, yeah. twice, twice. They certainly can do it between shows. Yes. Mm-hmm. And that's yes. my point. Right. When you know how to do it, it's, it's super easy. Mm-hmm. And it really is. To that, you also learned the why behind oh, yes. each one of those things, mm-hmm. right? Because I'm sure it was one of those situations where, okay, here's the plan. Mm -hmm. We're going to do this right here. And then we're going to do this. And here's why. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right. Like we're going to go and eat a big hamburger. Yes. For instance. Mm -hmm. On (laughs) on your second, like it's a two-day show. You Mm -hmm. competed in one division. I did bikini the first day. And then the next day's figure. Mm -hmm. So What did Joe ask? Uh, something like you want to blow her up no, like he goes, a tank. So you want to make a tank out of her? Yeah. Between bikini and and figure. figure? Yeah. Hell okay. yeah. So then, so. like, so it ended up being like something like hamburger helper because we couldn't find a burger at the time. But <laughs> but anyways, you know, macro wise, it was good. But if you don't know that why, and something drastically changes like that, that can scare the shit out of oh, you. Oh yeah. Which mm-hmm. is going to stress you out which can affect even your digestion, but of course your cortisol and everything else. In the moment when you're already such a nervous wreck, you're sitting there trying to go for pro cards and things like that. But if you know why, (laughs) it's just like, oh, because science. Because we want my body to look like this, and in order for your body to look like this, you consume this and this and this, and you don't necessarily touch what you did yesterday because we don't want to look like we looked yesterday. yesterday. So we have different goals today. Right. Mm-hmm. So we do different things and today. And that is key. Different goals today. Right. Mm-hmm. The goal's still a pro card both days, right? right? But, but mm-hmm. today's a the different goal day. for bikini, mm-hmm. the goal for wellness, the goal for figure, the goal for physique or bodybuilding. Right. Each one is different. Each look is different. Mm-hmm. They require different types of manipulation right. and strategy. Mm-hmm. And even the same division could be uh, different ones because oh, because there's a difference East Coast between and West Coast. There's a difference mm-hmm. between novice and masters. Mm-hmm. Like 
Mm -hmm. I've heard Sandy say many times at Masters Nationals, Mm -hmm. right? These girls can get away with being harder Mm -hmm. and leaner because they have mature muscle. muscle. There's nothing that you can do about that. Mm -hmm. It's an exception. uh, It is an exception to the rule. Yeah, because it is a natural occurrence. uh, Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, just... Again, know your whys. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I know we're getting close for you, too, though. Yeah. Uh, but also, like I said, this, the same division from show to show. Because some shows, they want to see them harder. Mm-hmm. Some shows, they're going to pick them softer. Knowing that from show to show, shoulder, uh, from region to region, mm-hmm. is really important, too. But that can be a topic for another day. 